the first day he comes into training, you're thinking, oh dear, this, this guy might not be here long. He's just got everything, absolutely everything. It's almost sometimes too easy for him. I mean, you can try and run him, he'll, he'll out sprint you. You can try and out muscle him, he'll, he'll, he'll beat you physically. The way you performed over the last few seasons has been world class. Driving in, beating two, three men, scoring goals, taking free kicks, and he, he looked afraid every time he got on the ball. We're all happy to have you here at Liverpool. Yeah, you're an amazing person. I don't look at any different to be fair from, from those. Um, if I was to ask you to talk about how you describe your childhood, how was it growing up? I had a great childhood. You know, I was playing outside on the streets a lot. I have a little brother, a little sister as well. My brother is two years younger than me, and at that time, playing outside was, you know, was it. Of the two of us, he was most of them the goalkeeper, so I just, you know, tried to score some goals on him, and I was always, I was always trying to be active playing different sports, whether it was sort of baseball kind of games or basketball, badminton, and then football, obviously, it was, it was, it was crazy, you know, I was two years at, the, at my, you know, club in, in, the, in the neighborhood, which you just saw in the picture, VDS 19, and then I went to Willem II, uh, who I played uh, for 10 years, and uh, I enjoyed every bit of it, it was, uh, it was amazing. Hi Virgil, allereerst gefeliciteerd met uh, het geweldige succes van Liverpool, het winnen van de Champions League. Dat is natuurlijk uh, waar heel veel spelers alleen maar van kunnen dromen. Jij hebt het gedaan. Dat is goed voor het Nederlandse voetbal, daar heeft iedereen baat bij. Ik ook, hier in Oezbekistan. Dus uh, ga ermee door en uh, ik wens je heel veel succes met het voetbal, maar ook uh, persoonlijk vlak met je familie. En uh, ik hoop je ooit nog eens in levende lijven te zien. Tot ziens. Hi. Groningen made your debut there. That's Peter Peter Hooster who, who, who gave you that. What was that experience like? Finally becoming a professional, playing in the in the Dutch league. Yeah, it was unbelievable. You know, I, I lived obviously down south in Holland. You know, everything was just was just there, and 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 then I decided, you know, to to make the step all the way up north. If you compare it to England, it's probably from from Liverpool to. I don't know even what you say, Norwich or something, still far. But for us, it's like from one way to all the way to the other. And it was a total switch. I lived on my own. Uh, I enjoyed every bit of it, to be fair. In the beginning, it was tough. Um, I didn't have my driving license, so I went to training on, bi on the bike every, every day. I was a bit lazy with getting my driving license. I wasn't even involved in the first team. And luckily, towards the end of the season, I got slightly more involved and, and I was, was, was happy to make my debut and you know to see him I didn't see him for a long long time so it was, it was nice to see I didn't even know he was there but yeah I hope he's, I hope he's all good and uh, what I say you know I'm always grateful for the people that helped me throughout the, throughout the way. Hi Virgil, uh, yeah. I'm Scott from Celtic, <laughs> do you remember me? <laughs> I don't really knew too much about him and then uh, two three months into the season all the lads are like, this guy is a player. And then you start speaking to the manager, you start speaking to other people, and he just becomes the Rolls Royce, Royce of the team. I mean, he's the best in the world, you know, and he could go and play for any club now, you know, but I think he looks very happy at Liverpool. And why wouldn't he be? You know, two Champions League finals and, you know, great Premier League run last year and another great Premier League run this year. Yeah, Celtic, what a time it was. Um, yeah, obviously. Before I made the transfer to Celtic, you're gonna look at at the team. Obviously, everyone knows. I think Scott Brown, anyway. So before I arrived there as well, I was like, how how would he be? Would he be that crazy as well as on, outside the pitch as he's on? Um, the way we played as well, you know, we most of the time we had more than 60% ball possession at least. We were attacking the whole time, and that's something that I've never experienced in in my previous career. You know, I was always at teams that. I had the ball at times, but you know we're more defending than attacking. And if you draw, it's not good enough. You, you know you have to win. If I'm thinking back now, I think the game we've played against Ajax in the Champions League in my first year, I think the atmosphere was outstanding. We won, I think, two-one. 
the atmosphere is something that you never forget, you know, that, that gives you that extra lift and, you know, it was, it was very special. If you were to describe Virgil van Dijk the player, what would it be, a couple of words? Absolute legend. I think he's going to go on to be one of the greatest of all time. Virgil, congratulations on Goal World Play of the Year, big man. Never thought you had it in you, but <laughs> unbelievable ability. Glad to have known you and enjoy my man. You've come a long way since the bounce game here at Lennox Town against Carlisle, but um, we never doubted that your progress would be as superb as it is. You've been a magnificent servant to your club so far, and you're doing wonderful things with Liverpool. Congratulations and have a great night. Nice messages, eh? Nice words, yeah. You know, those two definitely have, have played a part in it, and yeah, I think I think Bruni is, is, is making jokes about being a legend, but he's, he's a legend himself, so, uh, you know, Always, always, always thankful for those words, and that's the only thing I can say. I think. Congrats, Virgil, on being number one in the world. Uh, really proud to see it, and uh, I think uh, you deserve everything you get. Uh, the hard work you do, and uh, the qualities you showed when I played alongside you, and, and the quality you're showing now is, um, is like I said, really good to see. Um, and keep it going, mate. Really proud. Uh, Virgil, natuurlijk heb ik van heel nabij meegemaakt bij Southampton. Uh, geweldige uh, move gemaakt naar Liverpool en ja, is daar, ik uh, wil niet zeggen de koning, maar bijna en, 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 en ontzettend belangrijk in zijn persoonlijkheid, in, in dat team. Een leider, uh, ook bij momenten aanvoerder. So Southampton obviously your first step into the Premier League, was that, was that always an ambition to play in England? Was it always something that you thought, I'd like that, I'd like that to happen? Yeah, always, you know, I think um, when I definitely made my, 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 my professional debut in, in Holland, you know, it was always a dream to play out in the Premier League and I think it was the right time, it was the right club for me at the time as well and everyone knows, you know, Ronald Koeman and, you know, me personally as a centre-back, I definitely wanted to work, you know, for him and I have massive respect for, you know, already for what he've, what he've done in, in his football career and as a manager, obviously, you know, I've always had, had that respect anyway. At Groningen, I think I've met his dad, who sadly passed away a couple of years ago, um, who we've spoken to at the time as well, and I'll always be very thankful for that too. Virg, just want to say congratulations on the award. You deserve it, mate. I think the way you performed over the last few seasons has been world class. Um, yeah, we're all very proud of you, and it's a massive achievement. Well done. Hi, big man. First of all, I want to congratulate you with your award. Uh, it's been amazing. Uh, since you're here, uh, not only on the pitch, but also off the pitch. And uh, we're all happy to have you here at Liverpool. Trent and Jeannie, they're uh, doing their, their best uh, Logan <laughs> reporter impressions. Obviously, when you left Southampton and came to Liverpool, it's, it seemed and it, it, it felt like this was the only place that you wanted to be. Why was that and, and, and how quickly did you, did you realise you'd, you'd made the right decision? I made the decision on, on, based on many things and just the, my, I think my feeling is always the most important thing and I think Liverpool just you know were, were, were the strongest in, in, in multiple you know factors and you know the whole the whole feeling that you know everyone is having here and I've been here almost two years now and so far so good and obviously in, in football you never know what can happen in the future but so far you know I'm just very happy and glad that I'm I made the decision to come here and hopefully, you know, it, it will always be, uh, be good. You said so far, so good. I mean, you've had two Champions League finals in a season and a half. You've had a record-breaking Premier League. Did you think it'd go this well? wasn't expecting to be in the Champions League final straight away, if I'm absolutely honest. I was hoping to just, you know, play as good as I can, settle in the team. You never know what might happen, but to be in the Champions League final was, was, was something very special. And uh, on a personal level, in that, that case as well, I think the year before I went to the final myself to watch it in Cardiff, and then the year after I was, I was actually playing the final, unfortunately lost it. I, what I felt before the final in Madrid is that I don't want to walk through that lap of honor, like, you know, the guard of honor, you know, getting your silver medal. 
that feeling is the worst feeling I think you know you, you can have at the time and I thought about it definitely before the game that I'd, we're gonna make sure we're not gonna do it and we have to get that you know get the trophy no matter what and you know not a lot of players in their career wins wins the Champions League and such a difficult league to to compete in and such a you know difficult teams to beat and we actually did it and uh, you know I think we will always remem remember it also in, in Liverpool history for that. The moment that definitely plays you know, in my mind is, is the moment when Divo scored the goal and I was just, I knew it was done and I was, I was laying flat down on the, on the ground and the final whistle is just you know, tears in my eyes and just from, from so much joy and there are a lot of players in the team that never, that have not, not, don't have the, the easy route like you know, for example Robo, you know, just, just, a, just a tiny example. You know, he's, where he's coming from and where he is right now is just you know amazing to see and I think that should also give power to kids that are struggling at this uh, you know young age and uh, just to keep going because you know you, you never know what might happen in the future. <laughs> Have a big head watching something like that. Eh? What a song, yeah! What a what a video, actually. You know, I think a couple of my family members were in that crowd at the time, and I saw that video actually. I think it was before pre-match or after pre-match on the final, and I, I think I, I couldn't properly because normally we sleep, you know, after. I think I saw it after lunch actually, but I couldn't sleep anymore. I was just so excited. I wanted to just get out there and just, you know, and I don't have that too much. You know, I was just ready to go. I wanted to go out there, get the trophy and party with them as well and uh, I think it's, I'm, I'm very proud to get that song and you know that video definitely you know give me chills. Yeah, no, but what can I say, I can write a book about his skills, about his strength and uh, how much I like him, but the fantastic person he is, um, so young, already so mature, so strong, all good. Talking about the manager then, because I, I sit in press conferences sometimes and when he talks, I sometimes feel like I want to go out and play and I think I can't imagine what it must be like for a player to play under them. Yeah, he has, he has fantastic player management skills, I think, and you know, he, he does it just on instinct. He just do it because he thinks it's is, 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 is good to do. He will, he will talk to you whenever. I definitely have a special connection, I think, with him. And you know what I said before. I will always be grateful for you know him getting you know making sure that I'm I was gonna come here and uh, yeah he's just he's just a fantastic complete manager with a clear plan and the whole philosophy of the club with him with the staff with the players you know it's all one and I think that's very important at the football club and and hopefully you know we uh, we can achieve more things all together. You're an amazing person. You know it's difficult to say. A lot of good things about you, but I'm happy that I have you as a teammate. Uh, not only here, I'm also lucky to have you as a teammate um, at the national team. And I hope this will be the first of many. Yeah, congratulations and good luck for the rest of your career. Captaincy and a, and a, a, a nation that looks like it's on the way back up after some difficult times. How much pride does it give you to represent the Netherlands and, and to oh, be captain? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm so very proud of that. And, you know, as a young football player in Holland, I think the dream is always to play for your country, wear that orange shirt. To actually make my debut against Kazakhstan away was, was, was unbelievable and uh, you know, gave me so much good feelings, proud moments and obviously we, we've known difficult times but at the moment it's looking, it's looking good at the moment and uh, we have to keep working, stay humble and, and get back to you know, participating in, in tournaments. And, for now, I'm just very happy and, and, and proud to be, be the captain of our nation. Um, 
and hopefully lead the boys on in, in the next tournaments. So Ronaldo, Messi, Van Dijk, that seems to be the three at the moment. So when you think about the last 15 years and the way those two have been up the top, there's some achievement for you. Yeah, um, you know, very proud and uh, it can only happen with the achievements we do at the club, the collective achievements and to get recognition for that is, is just outstanding and maybe now I, I won't really, you know, understand how big it is because we are so busy and you know, it's just, it's just, it just comes on, comes at me, and I'm just absorbing everything. And, and I think it will be a time where I definitely realize, you know, what's going on. And uh, for now, I'm just, I'm just, you know, very, very proud to be, you know, to be in that bracket. Proud to be in the nomination for the Ballon d'Or. Even what's an absolute dream for every every young player, every football player at all. And uh, yeah, maybe it's time for a defender to win it.